Loretta Lynn, ever a coal miner's daughter, has passed away. It's a sad day for country music. And when I say country music, I mean country music. I don't mean the C-pop or whatever the heck it is now that the um, uh, the bubblegum country that is Taylor Swift and whoever else is out there now. Loretta Lynn uh, probably passes away as the grandmother or great-grandmother of country music that had the true soul and... Um, embodiment of what the genre was about. And unfortunately, I'm stuck here on a Washington Post article, which makes me feel like a sinner in and of itself. I should be reading this from the Tennessean, the uh, paper out of Nashville, but it is owned by the USA Today Network and is just probably worse. So Loretta Lynn. Singer-songwriter whose rise from dire poverty in Kentucky coal country to the pinnacle of country music has cr was chronicled in the best-selling memoir and movie, Coal Miner's Daughter. I didn't realize that was a book. Um, and whose candid songs gave voice to the daily struggles of working-class women died at her home in Hurricane Mills, Tennessee, which I've not heard of Hurricane Mills. But um, it's funny just in this first paragraph to hear Loretta Lynn, uh, whose songs gave voice to the daily struggles of working class women. When she started, working class women was not really a thing like it is now. Um, and... She is the embodiment of the Southern woman, the mothers of, like, I mean, my mom, my grandmas. Uh, it's a, they are, my wife, they are very unique, very determined. And where other countries, or other countries, where feminism came about, they would just say it's just life. And that's, that's Loretta Lynn. Her family confirmed the death in a statement, but did not cite a cause. Miss Lynn's uh, career was remarkable for its storybook accent from uh, hard scrabble origins. She was a teenage bride and mother, a country star, and a grandmother by her early 30s. Grandmother. A trailblazer for other female country performers, she was the first woman to win the Country Music Association's Entertainer of the Year Award in 1972. She also helped redefine and broaden the appeal of country music. She was the groundbreaking female singer-songwriter in country music. Robert Orman, co-author of Finding Her Voice, a study of women in country music, told Washington Post in 2003. Her songs were delivered from a distinctly female point of view that had not been done before, not the way she did it, Writing about women as they really lived, that was a breakthrough. I don't understand why that is a breakthrough. Again, it's just it's just the way it is. It's just the way it is. Uh, in 2013, when Miss Lynn received the Presidential Medal of Freedom, the nation's highest civilian honor, President Barack Obama called her the rule-breaking, record-setting queen of country music. We don't have queens in this country. In this country, but anyway, who gave voice to a generation singing what no one wanted to talk about and saying what no one wanted to think about? Um, she just did it her way. Her career was propelled by an indisputable musical talent, a strikingly photogenic presence, and a formidable gift. Having grown up as fast as I did when I got married took something away from me. She noted in her second memoir, Still Woman Enough, in 2002. But it also gave me something, a hard-won strength. Many of Miss Lynn's most memorable songs celebrate her Kentucky roots and were rendered in an unmistakable Appalachian twang. Her first album, Loretta Lynn Sings, in 1963, reached number two on the Billboard Country Album Chart. But her greatest success came later, often with tunes packed with personal meaning or topical social themes. 
The first of more than a dozen number one country uh, hits came in 67 with Don't Come Home a Drinking with Lovin' on Your Mind. That is a great song, by the way. If you have not heard that, please go listen to it right now. I mean, after I'm done and you've hit the subscribe and the like button, go listen to Don't Come Home a Drinking with Lovin' on Your Mind by Loretta Lynn. Several of her songs were tough-minded warnings of romantic rivals for her husband's affections, including You Ain't Woman Enough to Take My Man, <laughs> and number one country hit Fist City. <laughs> uh, I'm not saying my baby is a saint because he ain't, <laughs> and that he won't cat around with a kitty. <laughs> I mean, this is 1960s in the South. I mean, go to church every Sunday lyrics. I'm here to tell you, gal, to lay off my man if you don't want to go to Fist City. I mean, she's not mad at her man. She's mad at the women. What a gal. I love it. Some other well-known songs included Dear Uncle Sam, about a woman saying goodbye to her soldier husband, You're Looking at Country, Love is the Foundation, and One's on the Way. <laughs> I can only imagine One's on the Way. Written by humorous Shel Silverton about a beleaguered housewife expecting a child. I hope it ain't twins again, it, the song says. <laughs> <laughs> how can you not relate to her oh there was also the pill about the liberating effects of contraceptives on a woman's life miss lynn recorded the song by lorraine 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 excuse me allen dominic Han, and td bayless in 1972 her record company withheld it from release for three years and many radio stations refused to play it, but it eventually became a top five country hit. Sounds like they knew uh, to that timing was everything. Uh, Miss Lynn's coal miner daughter spent only one week at number one after its release in 1970, but it soon became the singer's signature tune. Well, I was born a coal miner's daughter in a cabin on a hill in Butcher Holler. We were poor, but we had love. Now, let's see here. Uh, that's the one thing that Daddy made sure of. He shoveled coal to make a poor man's dollar. After a 1976 memoir co-written with New York Times journalist George Vesky, Miss Lynn's popularity reached its zenith in the 1980 film Coal Miner's Daughter. While producers were also casting the movie, Miss Lynn casually announced on The Tonight Show that little sissy Spacek <laughs> By the way, Loretta Lynn's five foot one. Little Sissy Spacek would play her on the screen. Spacek, who shadowed Miss Lynn for months and sang all the movie songs, won an Academy Award for Best Actress for her portrayal. Critics praised English director Michael Apted's early depiction of Appalachian life and Miss Lynn's tempestuous marriage to Oliver Doolittle Lynn. Wouldn't you hate to have that as your nickname? Doolittle. <laughs> hey, Doolittle, get over here. Doolittle, what you doing? <laughs> she once told Rolling Stone magazine that every time Doolittle hit her, she gave it back in kind twice. I tell you something about the. You know why the University of Kentucky is called the Wildcats? Because they're women. For all the turbulence in their relationship, Miss Lynn credited her husband with pushing her to become a performer. I married Do. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. His nickname has a nickname and it's Do. <laughs> well, what'd you step in? I stepped in Do. <laughs> I love you, Loretta Lynn. I married Do when I wasn't but a child, and he was my life from that day on, she said in Still Woman Enough, written by Patsy Bill Cox. 
He thought I was something special, more special than anyone else in the world. He'd never let me forget it. That belief would be hard to shove out the door. Dew was my security and my safety net. There's uh, Loretta with Dew right there. <laughs> Dew little. Um, an electrified origin, Loretta Webb was born in Butcher Hollow. She wasn't born at a hospital, y'all. Uh, the hollow with electricity and indoor plumbing sat at the bottom of a hill outside of Van Leer, Kentucky, named for the local coal company. Her father, who eventually died of black lung disease, worked in the Van Leer mines. The second of eight children, Loretta attended a one-room schoolhouse before dropping out in elementary school. She cared for her younger siblings uh, while her mother worked in a nursing home. She didn't ride in a car until she was 12. Could you imagine? Well, what's this? It's a car. Well, I've never seen one before. Well, get in. How do I get in? And the family's sole connection to the outside world was a battery-powered radio with which broadcast the Grand Ole Opry. She married at 15, not 13, as she claimed in Coal Miner's Daughter. Her husband, then 21, was a moonshiner who owned the only car in the hollow, an army jeep. Wow. A year into their marriage, Miss Lynn, then pregnant with her first child, followed her husband to Custer, Washington. She had four children. Washington? Custer Wash. Really? She had four children by the time she was 19 and ultimately was the mother of six. After hearing her serenade the children around the house, Doolittle bought his wife a $17 guitar. $17 guitar is really nice nowadays. And encouraged her to sit in with a local country group. She soon starred her own band, Loretta's Trailblazers and won a talent contest hosted by singer Buck Owens in Tacoma, Washington. A talent contest owned by Buck Owens. That's crazy. In Tacoma. I mean, why did he move to, to Washington from... I just... My mind is blown. I'm telling you, Loretta Lynn's awesome. Miss Lynn wrote and recorded Honky Tonk Girl in 1960, then traveled around the country with her husband pitching the record to disc jockeys and endearing herself to uh, listeners with her unvarnished charm. During one interview, Dallas disc jockey Bill Mack complimented her on a dress she was wearing. Thank you, Miss Lynn said. I just washed it. <laughs> I've got to remember that. I've got to remember that. Oh, that's a nice shirt. Thank you. I just washed it. Oh, really? Where'd you find a laundry around here? Mac asked. I didn't find no laundry. I washed it in the back of the car. Oh, geez. That's awesome. Ms. Lynn replied, referring to the basin of water in the car. Mac pressed her further on how she got the dress dried. I blowed it dry out the window. You know what's funny? My mom put a shirt out the window when I was a little child because I got it dirty or something, you know? And I don't know why it was being dried hanging out the window and driving down the road. And she's like, well, it ought to be dried now. She just rolled the window down and the shirt went flying. It's like, she didn't stop. She didn't stop before she rolled the window down. Oh, just, just awesome. Awesome. Settling in Nashville in 1961, she landed a slot in a television show of the Wilburn Brothers, who brought her to the attention of Decca Records and renowned country music producer Owen Bradley. In the early 60s, Miss Lynn toured and performed with country star Ernest Tubb. She formed her most enduring musical partnership with singer Conway Twitty in the 70s and 80s, and the pair had five number one country singles together. You know, there's not not there's not uh, any like duets anymore like that. Isn't that something? Uh, and won the Country Music Association's Vocal Duo of the Year 
from 72 through 75. The records range from the doleful after the fire is gone to the upbeat Louisiana woman, Mississippi man. Oh, oh, that poor Mississippi man. And the melodramatic, as soon as I hang up the phone, Twitty died in 93. Um, he had a museum that was bought by, um, it's called Twitty City, and it was bought, it was his house and everything, and it was bought by the, what's the uh, evangelical group, uh, not group, but show, the one's got that huge blonde hair. TLC or something? No, not TLC. Well, anyway, they own it. Uh, beginning in the 1960s, Miss Lynn became a television fixture with appearances spanning such programs as The Tonight Show, The Muppet Show, I love The Muppet Show, and the Dean Martin Celebrity Roast. Oh, I've got to see that. I can't imagine her doing a roast. Uh, she discussed her teenage marriage and other intimate subjects with a plain-spoken manner that captivated audiences who had never followed country music. Miss Lynn later established a theme park, including a campground and a replica of her ch uh, childhood home near her home in Hurricane Mills, Tennessee. I didn't have a theme park. For years, she suffered from migraine headaches that sometimes forced her to miss performances. She was treated for an addiction to sleeping pills in the 80s. Miss Lynn won Grammy Awards for her After the Fire is Gone, her 1971 duet with Twitty, for 2004 duet, Portland, Oregon, with Jack White of the White Stripes. I've never heard it. I will after this. And for her 2004 album, Van Leer Rose, uh, she was inducted into the Country Music Hall of Fame in 1988 and received the Kennedy Center Honors in 2003 and a Lifetime Achievement Grammy in 2003. 2010. Lynn and her sister Gail with their mother Clara Butcher. Their mother doesn't look very happy. That's in 1980. Uh, let's see here. Three of Miss Lynn's siblings had careers in music. A brother, J. Lee Webb, who was a singer and played guitar in Miss Lynn's band, died in 96. Her sister, Peggy Sue, toured with her band in the 60s and 70s. Miss Lynn's youngest sister, Brenda Gale Webb, who had a successful country and pop career under the stage name Crystal Gale, won a Grammy for a 1977 hit, Don't It Make My Brown Eyes Blue. Oh, that's that chick. That's funny. Her eldest son, uh, Jack Benny Lynn, named for two of the singer's uncles, not the radio and film comedian, died in 84 after being thrown from a horse into a river on the family property. She also temporarily retired to nurse her husband for, husband for his death in 1996 after 48 years of marriage. A daughter, Betty Sue Lynn, died of uh, emphysema in 2013. Miss Lynn's twin daughters. Oh, that's in that song. Oh, I'm pregnant. I hope it's not twins again. Peggy and Patsy performed together as the Lynn's. A son, Ernest Ray Lynn, played guitar and bass for his mother's band. They survived her in addition to another daughter, Clara Marie Lynn, 21, 21 grandchildren and a number of great-grandchildren. Well into her 80s, Miss Lynn made new recordings and continued to perform. That's the secret. Don't ever retire. She returned to her Appalachian roots on the largely acoustic album uh, Full Circle in 2016. It was nominated for a Grammy for Best Country Album and fe featured Lay Me Down, an autumnal duet with fellow octogenarian Willie Nelson. These are the hard words. Uh, I could probably outwork anyone in Nashville. I ain't ready to lay down and die, she told People Magazine in 2016. I don't see no reason to quit right now. Amen and God bless you. Loretta Lynn, the great, look at that dress. That's so awesome. I mean, it's just so awesome. 
Thank you, Loretta Lynn. You lived a full life, and thank you for sharing it with us. Y'all, be good to each other. Be like Loretta. Don't stop kicking ass. I love y'all. See you next time. Godspeed.